So Brad, today I'd like to talk about video systems becoming more intelligent. Reacting to alarms is improving, um, but what is an alarm? Is it video analytics? How does it connect? Can you tell us a little bit about what this whole uh, intelligent alarm does? Yeah, so I mean, anymore, Rick, there's so many different means of getting in process, getting in alarms or events, processing them. What are you going to do with them? Is it going to be an input from a device? Is it going to be, uh, you know, a motion based event? Um, is that just going to be a call up on a video screen to alert your operators of a situation? Um, or is that going to need to be um, something more of a physical contact of some sort? that uh, in addition to putting video in front of the operators to make them aware of an event, to also do a secondary action. And that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today. So if I'm hearing you correctly, we could talk about analytics from a camera telling a device to do something else, like activate a strobe, activate a horn, activate a light, is that what we're talking about? Exactly right. So in this example that we're going to talk about today, uh, we're kind of targeting the Bosch analytics as being a uh, detector. And then um, we want to then fire a relay or an output uh, from an atom module, which is what I have here. It's a, it's a nice network IO device. It, it takes an IP address. You have uh, outputs and inputs, so there are 12 inputs on this particular Atom 6050, and then there are six outputs that you can utilize. Traditionally, what we were doing is we would take uh, one of these for, let's say, an existing analog system, and we would feed inputs, which would then, in this case, uh, inputs would come in front of the operator and call up video for, you know, from your PID system, which is your perimeter detection, system or anything like that. In this situation, what we're doing is kind of the opposite, where we're going to take analytical rules or motion rules from a camera, and we're going to then put uh, produce a physical relay off of this unit. So this Atom device actually is over Ethernet. Correct. But then comes out to a hardwired connection to a device like a horn or a light or something like that's that. That's exactly right. So everything else on the system is going to be Ethernet based. That's uh, signified by our blue lines here. And then our yellow line here is an actual physical two conductor cable that would then uh, be leaving the atom to whatever, whatever the customer would need on the other side. So if we have, if we want to open gates or do something else, aside from this fence, in this area, we would need another Atom device in between the network and the device, right? So there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, the, the great thing about these Atom modules is it, is it should make uh, either integrators or end users who are doing their own install or, or water pools, make them think about what their options are because it's on the network. It can sit anywhere on the network. So maybe that there's an you don't always need to pull a wire from the camera directly to what your horn, light, strobe, whatever it is, your gate. You can then stick this out there and make that run much less. Got you. Is this Atom device, is this PoE or does it require separate power? Or? This unit does require separate power uh, for the input. So yes, it's not a PoE device. That has to be taken into consideration when using these. Okay. I think you've answered most of my questions. Um, how can our customers find out about this device and how it works? So what they can do is uh, we actually wrote a uh, walkthrough tech note that um, kind of goes through procedurally how you would configure one of these within BVMS to make use of it in this fashion uh, or email us at support at midchest.com and one of us get back to you. That's awesome, Brad. Thanks for your time today and appreciate all the information on this Atom device. Absolutely, Rick. Thank you.